There have been a number of people who have asked me, how do I rewind film and what do I use to rewind film with? Do I have a particular favourite viewer that I use to, to rewind cinefilm? And for some years now, I suppose three years, I've been saying to all the Wolverine users, stop using the take-up reel, let your film drop into a box and rewind it by hand. And I've shown you all the processes that I do to scan a cine film and then export it um, and make it look as nice as I can and add a silly bit of music to it. But I've never actually shown you how I rewind film, but I harp on about, this is how I just rewind your film. It's easy. So I thought this time uh, I'd actually show you how I rewind cine film. Now the pink line that's just appeared on the screen, I see a lot of times in forums and Facebook groups that people will slag off the Wolverine for its frame registration and they'll say, oh no, it's no good, it, it just runs around all over the place. Well, look at that pink line against the sprocket hole and make your own mind up about how stable the Wolverine scanner can actually be. Let's talk about the settings quickly. We're doing this at 2592 by 1944, which is the largest area uh, the sensor on this camera will do. Normally I will use partial scan and just crop into the frame of the film because I don't like the light table and the sprocket showing through uh, because it upsets the auto exposure and the white balance and the, the gamma and everything else because it's too busy looking at the LED light coming through the table. Um, this is a two and a half hour scan, 7,500 frames, 125 feet. That took two and a half hours at one frame per second. The purpose of this video is to show you how I rewind films, because I've been saying for years, if you've got a Wolverine scanner, don't use the take-up reel, partly because the film guides will scratch the shit out of your film. Um, and the take-up will cause frame jitter. Let the film drop out of the frame into a plastic tub and then rewind it by hand. And I've done lots of videos on scanning and colour correcting and music videos but I've never actually shown you how I rewind so the purpose of this video is at the end to show you the rewind. Uh, if you haven't got the patience by all means there are timestamps down below and you can stamp your way through the video to see the bits you want to see. This is an 8mm copy of a 35mm print that would have been shown in the cinemas. Uh, narrated by Bob Holness, no less. <laughs> I'll have a pee, please, Bob. <laughs> yeah, I bet you will. Um, great film. Uh, it's gone red now. It's suffering from cyan dye failure. Uh, and because we've done an overscan, it's going to be really difficult to do any colour work with this. So, But there it is, look, from Fletcher Films. Uh, it's about 125 feet. And there's my very posh plastic box that I let the film drop into. And yes, it is sitting on top of my cat's bed, but the fur doesn't travel through plastic. Please ignore the hole in the corner of the plastic box. And there's my laptop, and we're scanning away. And this is going to say, as I say, take two and a half hours. And if you can see the film travelling through the gate there, you'll see how red it really is. That cyan dye failure. Uh, and the things we can do with the camera on the scanner and DaVinci Resolve to take that red out, uh, the, the possibilities are endless, I love it. Look how that's just coiling itself up in the plastic box. I mean, this is what they did in the Hollywood in the 1930s. They, when they were editing films, they dropped them into bins. 20 feet here, 50 feet there, a half a reel into another plastic bin. And then pull them out of the bin and join them all together and make a film. So if you've got your scanner right on the edge of the table and you just let the film do its thing and coil up like you're seeing here, no harm is going to come to that film. It's not going to get scratched, it's not going to get damaged.
Um, you're seeing here the, the guides on the, the Wolverine. And the, the original guides are the same surface width across the width of, of the guide. And as the take-up reel is tugging on your film, pulling it through the gate, it's rubbing itself across those film guides. And that is what is scratching your film. The guides on my um, modified Wolverine have been 3D printed. And they don't touch the centre of the film, they only touch the edge of the film. I don't know if you can quite see it in this. I think you can see it. So my films aren't getting scratched. The gate is not going to scratch your film because the guides touch the side of the film and the claw goes through the sprocket. It's the guides on the Wolverine that are doing the damage to your film. And the way that take-up reel is pulling on that film, pulling it through the guides, then your film is going to get scratched. This is the Minette viewer uh, that I use to rewind my films. It's a standard 8 viewer, and I have no need to view standard 8 films. Um, but it does work, but unfortunately I chose to cut the mains lead off it just to make it easier to move around and have sitting on the table. And this is what I use to rewind a film out of the bin. And I always use the left hand reel because it's got a slightly better gearing than the right hand take up reel. So we've taken the film off the scanner just before it got to the gate. We didn't let it drop into the box. If you let that film drop into the box, you are in deep poo. So we're gonna pick up the film with our right hand and a cotton glove and gently rewind onto the spool. It's not rocket science. It's not an Olympic sport. You're not in a hurry to do this. You just want to get that film back onto the spool. You might find a loop will come up the, the travel of the film, but just stop winding and let it drop back and continue. It's really, really easy to do a slow hand wind, but the key is having a hand wound viewer. Don't use a projector, it will go too fast and you'll end up with a pile of spaghetti between your cottoned fingers. Thanks for watching, see you next time.